and welcome to another weekly update. I hope you're doing well. I hope you had a good week. Uh, some interesting things to talk about this week. Uh, starting to starting to think forward to build a little bit. I think we had that announcement last week. Um, and uh, I don't know, it seems to be tied to the weather as well. You know, the, the weather starts to get warmer and then we start to think that means conference season is coming, uh, kicking off with build and a couple of other interesting ones. Anyway, let's get into the things that have changed. Uh, this one was really interesting. So it's kind of interesting on two levels. So f there's a blog post out by on the Microsoft 365 platform uh, blog, and it's about a change to the Microsoft Bookings Graph API, uh, which is currently in beta, and it's a name change. Now, by itself, that's not that surprising. Um, these uh, beta APIs do sometimes change their endpoints. They change their names around a little bit. Um, and um, yeah, yeah. So uh, this one is interesting because of how it's been renamed. So let me just show you what I mean. Uh, here's the here's the blog post. And all of the booking APIs, I think I think it's all of them. It's certainly a whole bunch of them um, around being able to look at businesses, appointments, currencies, blah, 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 questions, customers, services, stuff. They're all changing. This is a terribly formatted table. But anyway, they're going from slash beta, slash booking, whatever it is, uh, booking currencies, booking business, whatever, whatever to slash beta slash solutions slash booking business and then carrying on. So what's happened here? A new slash solutions endpoint has been inserted and then all of the bookings APIs are sitting underneath that solutions API. Now, I have some thoughts about this. I don't really know what it means. Um, but if you think about, and this is me calling like trying to marshal my thoughts in real time before I go and write a blog post about this. Um, so you're kind of getting the benefit of my thinking out loud, I suppose. Uh, if you think about graph, on one level, it's a way for you to access your data. So your, your OneDrive files, your emails, your Microsoft Teams messages, and that's fine. On another level, though, it's a way to automate things that Microsoft give you that are not necessarily tied to your data. So Bookings is quite a good example of that. Bookings is a service that Microsoft provide. And now through Graph, you can access that service. So I'm wondering if that's why they're starting to bucket some of these things under solutions to demarket slightly from you accessing your data. This is solutions. This is you uh, using a Microsoft service. And the, the only the only logical endpoint I can think of for doing some of this stuff is that eventually there'll be some payment that needs to happen um, in order to use them. Um, I don't know if that's true. Um, maybe it's just a tidying up exercise. It seems a little odd if it is, um, but it'll be interesting to see if this slash solutions endpoint gets used um, and gets kind of announced, if you like, as a thing. And then we'll find out uh, what the implications are for pricing, if, if anything, or what the implications are for support. Um, or maintainability or SLAs or any other of a number of different things that we don't know at the moment. So anyway, I thought it was interesting because of that. Um, and then obviously also interesting if you're using the Bookings API for something uh, that you need to be aware that the name is changing. Okay, there's a blog post and a sample from the Azure Communication Services team all about how can you can combine Azure Communication Services and OpenAI to make a better contact center experience. And I think this was really good. This is a great blog post. The sample is great. Um, I think this is a really nice example of how you can combine these two things together in a very logical way. It completely makes sense. I like their um, example that they've got here where you've got a customer calling a support agent who's using Teams uh, and they get the history. The history gets sent to OpenAI uh, to, for suggestions. And the suggestions come back and are presented to the agent. Um, it's not quite a, um, you know, what the code they give is a sample. So it, it's not exactly a fully working contact center. Um, it is a great starting place, though, if that's something you're looking to build. And uh, I think the sample is really good. I'm going to try and get the sample up and running and we'll do a blog post about it because I think it's a good one. Um, and it'd be good to, uh, to do a, like a video talking it through, I think so. Um, so look out for that because I think that's uh, that's something I'm going to be doing soon. Um, yeah, because I think it's a good one. Uh, but I wanted to draw your attention to it as something uh, that you can go and go and have a look at the sample. There's links in the blog post to the GitHub sample uh, that goes through it all as well. All right, there's a new command in uh, 
Windows, I suppose, in the Windows terminal, which is sudo, um, or sudo, depending on how you pronounce it. The thing that's been in Unix for a long time that allows you to temporarily get a admin privilege to run a command. Uh, in Windows, it's always been a bit messy. You've had to do the kind of run as administrator thing in your terminal, and then you've kind of lost some of the context of where you are because it spawns a new window. Um, and so there's a new way of doing it now uh, in the Windows 11 inside a preview build. Um, so it'll, if you don't have it yet, just hold on. It'll come It'll come to you eventually. Uh, but um, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's coming. Uh, it's weird that you have, you have to turn it on in Windows, which is slightly strange, feels slightly strange. It's a whole toggle feature thing that you have to turn on in Windows. Um, but then when you do, uh, you can use it in a command line just like this. And there's a couple of different configuration options. Um, it will open this in this configuration option. It will open a new console window, run the command. Um, and the uh, in the second option, which I'm still trying to get my head around, it will run the elevated process in the current window. OK, but the new process will be spawned um, with its uh, standard in closed. So the new process will not accept any user input. OK, so it's that's more of a, like a one and done. Um, and it will run in line and under the hood, it sounds like it's doing some magic to kind of create a new process and then close it down again, um, which sort of makes sense, I suppose. And then in the other option, the first one I looked at, it's going to open it in a new window. So you've got a couple of options for how you want that to work. But I think this is going to be super useful for those of us that use the command line to quickly get stuff done um, and kind of run up against that, you know, requires admin privileges um, prompt. All right, and finally, uh, last thing to take you through. It's just a bit of a long read um, rather than anything technical, which I thought was useful. Um, and it's from Directions of Microsoft. It's uh, by Barry Briggs, who uh, he used to be a CTO um, in Microsoft IT. So he obviously has good thoughts. And he is just thinking about uh, what all of this AI stuff means for IT organizations um, and what it means for all the stuff that they used to do and is that stuff still necessary? Is it still important? Should they keep doing it or should they stop? Um, and so he goes through, like, I feel like the core message that he's putting through in this blog post um, is all of this AI stuff sits on top of data. And it's your job to make sure, um, you know, the data is the most important part of your business. And um, so it's your job to look after that data to make sure it stays safe, to make sure it stays up to date. And then, then, like the data is the foundation, if you like, on which all of that stuff builds. Um, and so really thinking about the scaffolding and the foundations of data is super important um, for a sort of successful uh, enterprise strategy around around AI. All right. I think that's everything I want to talk about this week. going to try and keep it nice and short. Um, yeah, busy week, I think. I'm going to try and put out at least one video and uh, a blog post, but we'll see how well that goes. Um, and uh, it's not that long till MVP Summit that's coming up really soon um, which will be great and I'll try and do an update from there as well um, and uh, yeah should be good anyway hope you have a great week whatever it's you're doing this week and I will speak to you again next time